Good evening. The state television company of Western Armenia represents the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast. Ceremony of the 102nd anniversary of the Armenian Legion and closing of the strategy of the Republic of Western Armenia series of seminars. There will be a legal right to climb Mount Ararat. Biden should keep his word and recognize Armenian genocide. Newsweek. Peacekeepers heading to Russian Turkish monitoring center in Artsakh. Erdogan posting a photo of Armenian church in Kars as a mosque. The uprising of Zeytun ended on this day 126 years ago. Fundraising for Western Armenia TV. The Prime Minister of the Republic of Western Armenia, Sedam Elikan, presented an opening speech summing up the series of the 10-day seminars organized in cooperation with the representatives of the government and parliament. She thanked the participants of the seminar for willing to develop new programs. Melikan mentioned that the economic, political and strategic programs that were discussed in those days will clearly have their role and significance in the upcoming programs of the Republic of Western Armenia. She touched upon the role and significance of the Armenian Legion as a foundation of the Armenian Army. Then the Minister of Defense and Armed Forces of the Republic of Western Armenia, Hamik Zayadian, presented the history of the origin of the Armenian Legion and spoke about the strategy, emphasizing that now the primary goal for the Republic of Western Armenia is to establish new connections and relations with armed forces of other countries. Afterwards, Hamik Zayadian performed an awarding ceremony by Order 17 of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, commemorating the heroes who died in the Artsakh battles as well as the servicemen currently serving at the border. Karen Grikorian, Varazdat Varazdatian, David Petrosian and others were awarded with the Armenian Legion Blazon. Deputy Minister of Defense Suren Shahumyan was also awarded for his dedicated service to motherland. Concluding the event, President of the Republic of Western Armenia Armenak Abrahamyan thanked the representatives of the government and National Assembly, assuring that the 10-day seminar will have its vital impact on new programs. On the eve of the 102nd anniversary of the establishment of the Armenian Legion, he mentioned that it was created for three important purposes. To fight against the Ottoman Empire, to liberate Cilicia, to become the core of the future Armenian ethnographic army. The Turkish Mountaineering Federation has announced that the climbing to Mount Ararat will take place on February 4 with the participation of the Federation's coaches. The Federation mentioned in a statement that Mount Ararat has been close to mountaineering for a long time. The coaches who want to take part in this action must submit an application. The climb to the top of the mountain will take place from February 4 to 9. Historically, the United States record on recognizing genocide has been problematic. Public relations professional Stepan Peshtimadze wrote in an article in Newsweek. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo declared that China was committing genocide against Uyghurs and other minorities in Xinjiang province. Whether this was intended to box the newly elected president remains to be seen. It should not have taken so long for Pompeo to come to such a conclusion on his last day in office, especially with the prevalence of Uyghur testimonials and satellite images of Chinese camps. It makes us question the efficiency and authenticity behind the decision. It sows further doubt in our government institutions and highlights how genocide can be used as a political tool. We have seen for decades how presidents from both parties use the Armenian genocide for political expediency. President Joe Biden has a unique opportunity to restore faith and confidence in Washington by recognizing the Armenian genocide on April 24, which marks the 106th anniversary. Through this small but significant move, Biden can upend the status quo by sending a strong message to the world that the United States is committed to upholding democratic values and principles in the wake of Trumpism. The full article is available with the following link. The Russian servicemen have started heading to the Giamadinlu region of Artsakh, where the Russian-Turkish Joint Center for the Monitoring of the Ceasefire and Military Operations in the Karabakh conflict zone will be located, the Russian Defense Ministry reported. The staff on this joint center, which is equally represented by the Russian and Turkish sides, will monitor the situation and the ceasefire by means of drones. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan posted a photo of the Armenian Arakelot church in Kars with the Kars fortress in the background on his Telegram account. Attached to this photo, Erdogan made a note dedicated to Friday, which is considered to be the main day of Islamic prayer. The Armenian Arakelos church in Kars was built in the 10th century and was a functioning church until October 30, 1920. After capturing Kars, the Turks turned it into an oil depot and arsenal, then left it to the whim of fate and in the 20s it was turned into a mosque and renovated. There are frescoes and crosses of the apostles on the walls of the church. 
The uprising of Zeytun from 1895 to 1896 was the response of the Armenians to the Hamidian massacres. In order to break the self-defense force of the Armenians, the authorities used the subjugation of this region. Realizing this circumstance, the Armenian national forces, particularly the Hinchakians, took measures to strengthen the mountainous region. In the summer of 1895, Garun Agassi, Mako Shahen and others moved to Zeytun. Nazare Chavush became the leader of the uprising. The people of Zeytun, led by 75-year-old old Ghazar Shovroyan and Agassi started an uprising in early October. By dawn on October 16, the 700-strong Turkish garrison was disarmed, 600 rifles, two German artillery pieces and a large quantity of other ammunition were seized. The red flag of the rebels was raised on the barracks with the inscription Independent Authority of Zeytun. An interim government of Zeytun was formed, headed by Agassi. In November 1895, Two Turkish armies moved on Zeytun. During the unequal battles in the beginning of December, Armenians inflicted heavy losses towards the enemy. The enemy gave more than a thousand killed and retreated. The news of this heroic battle of Zeytun reaches Europe as well. With the intervention of the great powers, on January 30, 1896, a peace was signed in Aleppo. The Turkish army left the province, the Armenians were pardoned, their lives and property were secured. The heroic uprising of Zeytun is one of the glorious pages of the Armenian military history. The management of Western Armenia appeals to all the Armenian people who are interested or concerned about the present and future of the Republic of Western Armenia and its problems. Our television plays an important role in this responsible and difficult process, the moral and material stability of which is in the interest of all of us. Let's unite our will and forces to support Western Armenia and TV, to invest our contribution to strengthen it and to achieve our goals. You can send your financial support to the following accounts. Now I present you Zeytun Tineri Kyle Erkin. version is available on the official website of Western Armenia TV. This was all for today. Goodbye.